Hello, welcome to this new series of videos I'm going to be doing, which seems to be a catchphrase of mine and has been for many years. But nevertheless, this is going to be a new series I'm going to be starting. I don't know what to call it yet. It might be 24-hour movie marathon vlog. It could be something else. I might come up with a catchier title for it. But for right now, I'm going to do something I had the idea for a year ago, which was to sit down and watch other people's 24-hour movie marathons, react to them, do a video response to them, whether it be talking about the video that they've made, how they've made it, the little things they put in along the way, or just the films that they're talking about and what I think about them. I think it could be a fun idea. And the genesis of it was to not only um, have fun and watch other people's marathon videos, which I love anyway. I'm a big fan of watching other people's 24-hour movie marathon videos, but also to encourage other people to do it because they could see me reacting to their video maybe, that there's an outside chance that might spur someone on maybe to make their own uh, I really want to see more people doing it. And also, um, it's just a, it's a cool way to kind of do bring back the video response in a way, which was such a big part of the YouTube community and seems to have just disappeared uh, since they took away the option to do video responses. So, yeah, I felt like it would be a good idea to, to do this and to also give exposure to those marathon videos so other people can go, oh, I'll watch that now. So... Uh, this will be kind of commentary style, but mainly just kind of stopping it and talking about bits and pieces as I go along. And if you're unfamiliar, which is highly unlikely, but if you are, the 24-hour movie marathon was started by this man, Ryan Chataway, who um, started the marathon in 2012. Yes, this is live, uh, in-camera, uh, in-webcam editing as I'm going along. This is very exciting. Um, and he created the marathon in 2012, and his idea was to unite the community together, the YouTube movie community, in talking about movies and to do a 24-hour movie marathon where you watch films for 24 hours, make the video where you're showing what you're drinking, what you're eating, what films you're watching, what you think of the films you're watching, to set up guidelines for you to watch films that you wouldn't have ordinarily um, picked yourself and to... Um, Again, uh, make it a community event, you know, where people could join in, post their own videos, and we can all kind of watch them and stuff. And I'd like to say that it took off from there, but it didn't really, I don't think. That quite a few people did it, but not enough, in my opinion. Though I understand that it can be quite difficult to get uh, 24 hours where you can sit down and watch films for that long. And then, of course, that kind of screws up your sleep cycle for the next day. So you really need a couple of days at least to kind of set aside to do this marathon challenge and I won't go too deep into my history with it other than I do it every year and apart from the first year I do it over a span of multiple days so what I'm going to do is um, kick off with the first I believe uh, 24 hour movie marathon video from 2017 uh, which would be um, Karate Popcorn and what I'm going to do is uh, Scroll through YouTube. Uh, well, no, first I'm going to type in 24 hour movie marathon and uh, hopefully it's in the search results. Um, so at the top there, we got the Cinema Surfers Marathon. Number two, we got mine. I'm not sure if that's because it's on my browser. That's very possible. And number three, awesome, uh, is There's Her Marathon. I don't think she's done it before. Um, and I was quite excited when she released the teaser video. Uh, say, announcing that she was doing the marathon because she'd never done it before. She had a small appearance in my marathon last year, Marathon 5. And uh, yeah, I love her videos. One of my favorite channels, particularly when her husband gets involved in some of her videos. He's very funny and, and mainly it's the chemistry they have together. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, he makes at least a, a brief appearance, even if it's a cameo in this video. It's an hour and nine minutes long which by my standards is incredibly short, but it means I won't be doing a complete commentary over it or anything like that. Um, as I would be able to anyway, because a lot of it is just people talking about films. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is open it up and start to watch it. What's up you guys? It is time for the 24 hour movie marathon. All right, here Thanks we go. to Ryan Chataway, all of all right, so the first film she's going to be watching is uh, an interesting one already. I've got a lot to say about this before we even get fully started on this. And this is kind of the idea, is to kind of just talk about some of the stuff people are watching in the video as well, if you have things to say about it. Um, Prometheus, uh, she's going to watch the the three and a half hour long uh, documentary Furious Gods or something like that. Uh, an uber documentary about the making of Prometheus. And I just started watching that like a week ago. I bought the Blu-ray, the very one she has in her hand there in the the, uh, the still shot there. 
Um, the 3D Deluxe Edition had no interest in the 3D whatsoever. But uh, I bought the 3D Edition to get the three and a half hour long documentary. That was like five years ago. And I only now, having watched Covenant and getting back into an alien kind of uh, mindset and mood, I decided to start watching the Prometheus documentary. Connie is a huge fan of the alien films and Prometheus and Covenant. She loved Covenant. So um, we've been watching it together over dinner. And that's something we always do. We usually... Um, We'll either watch like short web videos that we like, or more often than not, it's special features for films. I mean, the Hobbit uh, 3D Deluxe Editions, they lasted us months as far as all the special features are concerned, watching them every day with dinner. So we're about an hour into the Prometheus one, and it's interesting that she's going to tackle it in one go as her three-hour movie. And I do think it counts as a three-hour film, because to me, documentaries are films as well. Uh, I think they're just as valid as, uh, you know, narrative fiction, so... Uh, yeah, I'm going to see what her thoughts are on it and then uh, carry on with this, whatever this thing is. Um, but I'm looking forward to, to hearing what she has to say about it in, in general and what it's like to watch a, a film like that in one go. I don't feel as tied down to uh, making of documentaries as I do with actual uh, proper uh, uh, fiction films because I feel like you need to follow the story in one go. With making ofs, you can kind of dip in and out whenever you want, so I don't usually watch those in one fell swoop, but... Yeah, looking forward to hearing what the thoughts are. Uh, let's continue this. Okay, I'm eight minutes into the video. Uh, not even, there's more than an hour to go already. And there's just more stuff to say. So these videos could turn out to be massive. Uh, but who cares, right? I, I'm enjoying this so far. I'm really liking the way that she's done this. Especially this little detail. Uh, as you can see, where before every film, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm guessing she's going to do it for the rest of the marathon. There's this little kind of stand she's got now playing and she's put the Blu-ray on there. And that's kind of a nice little um, kind of title card for the movie. I usually just put the text like, you know, movie number four, blah, blah, blah. And then the year it's released. This is a really cool way of doing it. I really like this. Uh, <laughs> and as I said before, I was hoping that it'd be a, a brief appearance, at least from her husband. And there kind of was, and there's a really funny exchange between the two, which just cracked me up to no end. And so, yeah, that, that again, a big part of my um, uh, enjoyment of her video sometimes is the way he'll oftentimes be off screen, kind of having uh, quasi arguments with her, which is kind of fun. So, and also To Kill a Mockingbird, the classic she's never seen. That was the classic I'd never seen when I did the first 24 hour movie marathon five years ago. Um, I remember distinctly sitting down with a Dr. Pepper to watch it because uh, as it was wrapping up, I was ready to jump on a bus to go to the cinema to continue my marathon. So um, yeah, anyway, on with uh, the video. All right, so she just finished watching Predator 2, which I have um, kind of fond memories of because uh, when I was a kid, I remember begging my dad to buy me Predator on VHS. I must have been like 11 or something. Uh, and he finally caved in. And, and when he caved in, I realized I kind of had him. I was like, you know, they got Predator 2 there as well. I mean, you need the set, you know. <laughs> so I, I, I wore him down and he got me Predator 1 and 2. I'd already seen the first one. My granddad taped it off the TV. But I had the proper VHS copy. I watched it, loved it again. And then I watched the second one. And being a very young boy, I was quite mesmerized by the sex scene in the film. But nevertheless, uh, it was a film that really... um. It, it, it kind of creeped me out more than the original when I was a kid anyway. I haven't gone back to Predator 2 in so long. It must be at least 15 years since I've seen that film. And I've really got quite an urge to go back to it now um, for some reason. Uh, and again, the, the, the alien head thing, which I don't think she mentioned, um, was something that was so cool. Uh, when you knew about it and you saw it in the ship at the end and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's a, it is a great cast. I, I really should go back to it, um, and I probably will. I have the Blu-ray, but uh, it's just one of those ones that I picked up to put on the shelf and to watch at a later date. So I guess that's kind of a good thing. You know, you buy these, the, I'm going off on a tangent, but you buy these Blu-rays and you're like, oh yeah, I really want that film. You don't watch it for years. You think, what was the point? And then all of a sudden, you really want to watch Predator 2 and you got the Blu-ray. So that kind of just um, makes me feel good about those kind of, not blind buys, but the buys where you're not planning to watch the film immediately, but you know it's going to be there for the right moment when you feel like, I want to go back to that. So on with the video. Which I'm probably going to be saying a lot throughout this video. So, oh, and also, yes, yeah, the next day. So she's doing it over multiple days, which I, I think is fine. I really think that uh, watching 24 hours worth of films over a multiple day period really makes it more of an event. I suppose it's quite an event when you do it over 24 hours as well, but uh, I really do like the um, 
making a long weekend out of it. So, yeah. All right, you guys. Taking a little trip over to Taco Bell. It's the following day. And, and it's nice to I see this kind of out and about stuff as well. I think that really I is a cool part of our marathon last sometime. night about Predator 2. I woke up, I'm like, holy shit, I forgot to talk about the, the alien, alien head. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Which was amazing when this movie... Yeah, you have to talk about the alien head when you talk about Predator 2. It's just, it's required, so. Alright, she's uh, just finished watching Rumblefish for the first time. And I want to say that it's uh, a great film. Uh, like, my instinct is, oh, great film. But it really has been so long since I've seen it. I was a teenager when I first saw Rumblefish, uh, late night TV, which I felt like was the perfect atmosphere to watch that film. And I loved it. I, I, I just I fell in love with the, the, the mood of it. It's a very like moody film. There's, there's such atmosphere to it, and there's such an incredible cast. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola, you know, uh, and I'm literally looking at the, the cast listing on the front of the DVD she's holding up, but Matt Dillon, Mickey Rourke, Diane Lane, Nicolas Cage, um, Dennis Hopper, it's incredible. I have the Blu-ray, I've never gone back to it, so again, I've kind of got the itch now to uh, to go and check out Rumblefish. Um, she said something about The Outsiders at the beginning, which I really want to see. That's another one that has a an incredible cast retrospectively, you know, people who went on to have much bigger careers. I really want to see The Outsiders, but... Um, yeah, um, Rumblefish, great film. On with this video. Okay, I'm halfway through the video now. Uh, 30 minutes and 59 seconds. And she watched um, The Black Cauldron, which I'd never seen. And I, I guess I've heard kind of mixed things about it. I didn't know it was quite as uh, shat on, I guess. Like, again, a nice little interaction with her husband off screen where he's like, oh, terrible film. <laughs> Um, but she, she thought it was okay, but she said it was more like, uh, it didn't feel like a Disney film. And I have seen clips from it, and I, I kind of get where she's coming from. But I still want to see it, because it's Disney. I'd love to see all of those films at some point. I think I've probably seen at least half of the Disney classics at this point. But, uh, that's one that's definitely eluded me, even as a kid. Um, because I had most of the classics on VHS, but that one was, was one I never had, or had taped off the TV, anything like that. And she's about to watch, uh, Singing in the Rain, for the musical choice. Uh, she hasn't seen it either. I've never seen it uh, and kind of like her in a way I, f I felt like I needed to see it after Debbie Reynolds passed away uh, in December, but uh, I haven't got to it yet But it's one that I definitely want to check out sooner rather than later probably at some point this year. I think so um, Yeah, okay. It turns out I, I kind of scanned back through the video and I made a, a bit of a mistake She actually picked singing in the rain as the movie that begins with the first letter of her last maiden name <laughs> <laughs> Which, when you get to that point, is quite convoluted, and and that was definitely a uh, two of the guidelines this year that were kind of um, difficult to kind of find a film for because there's just so many that start with the letters letters of your first and last name. So uh, this, the Lord of the Rings, the Ralph Bakshi film, is the one that she's going going for with the silent, animated, or musical um, guideline. So obviously being animated. Um, and uh, Lord of the Rings, the, the animated film, that that for me was a film that I saw after The Fellowship of the Ring came out. Um, I remember it coming out in, in cinemas in 2001 and I, I had no knowledge of it. Went to see it, loved it, and I think I got the DVD or maybe the VHS of the animated version as a Christmas present. I think at first I had like a split second, like I opened it, I was like, oh my god, it's out already? But, oh wait, no, it's an animated version. Uh, and I watched it and I loved it, but was really frustrated that it kind of ended so abruptly. Uh, and at that point, I hadn't kind of um, gotten into the the stuff beyond Fellowship of the Ring, because I literally went movie by movie. I read the first book after the first movie came out, but I didn't read The Two Towers, I couldn't get into it. So it was only until all the films were out that I went and read the entire Lord of the Rings books. Um, but yeah, the animated film kind of was a frustrating one for me, because I wanted more out of it. And at the same time, I was kind of just frustrated that it wasn't the the live action movie at the same time so that's one i really really need to go back to because uh i remember really appreciating even as a you know, young teenager the um the the just the different style of it the, the rotoscoping animation they, they did with live action actors integrated with the other stuff just a really cool and interesting visual style for an animated film uh, that really stood out um like those images are still quite vivid in my my mind like 15 years later so 
that's another one for me to go back and check out. See, this this video is just just kind of telling me go back and watch that other film. Go back and watch that other film again. You know, uh, well we got Rumblefish, uh, Predator Two, Lord of the Rings. So, yeah. All right, forty six minutes and fifty eight seconds into the video, and um, she's done an interesting thing with the trilogy kind of bonus guideline, which we didn't do this year. Um, spoilers. Um, we did it last year, we did the Rambo trilogy, but um, she made her own trilogy, which I think is a really cool idea. And I think that the guidelines for the marathon, they're, they're there to be broken, they're there to be kind of molded and played around with and, and fucked with in a way, you know, and kind of make you know your own stuff out of it, um, which we, we kind of did a little bit this year. Anyway, um, she's made her own trilogy of um, Predators, Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator Requiem, which of course isn't a tr trilogy in any any way or shape or form but they, they are kind of linked so i like the way she's done that um she watched predators first and i have to wholeheartedly agree i i was not really a fan of that film at all uh i was wondering hmm you know, what's she what's she gonna think about this one and, and she was like yeah not not a good film or, or something to that effect and um yeah i i couldn't agree more like it just it just fell flat to me like it wasn't interesting there was some some good elements in it like the bits and pieces that were good but as a overall film it was just so forgettable you know and i never went back to it and i i probably might not unless i want to do some kind of review series going through all the the franchise i don't know but uh yeah as far as those three films predators avp and avp requiem i know which one i prefer the most and it's the first avp by a country mile like it's just there's no competition so i'm intrigued to see what she thinks of the uh the two alien versus predator movies so i will continue and now it's frozen the the joys of doing this uh through my computer with the youtube screen integrated any second now any second now all right, we're in the home stretch. One hour, one minute, and 51 seconds. Roughly uh, six or seven minutes left to go in the video. Um, and I, I, get, I kind of share the same opinions on the Alien vs. Predator films. The first one, it's a fun film. It, I, I like a lot about it. It's not a great film. It maybe isn't even a really good film, but there's a lot to like about it. I, I hate the, f <laughs> the fact that at the end of the film you have the main character standing around in the Antarctic wearing nothing but pretty much a t-shirt or a short, uh, long-sleeved shirt, and, and she's not cold at all. Like, you know, I mean, I understand adrenaline warms you up, but not that much. <laughs> uh, but I, I, there's a lot to like about it. It's not one I, I, I go back to a lot, but um, yeah, and then the second one, Requiem, just... I can't even say that Requiem's a bad film because I don't remember anything about it. It was so forgettable. All I remember is an image of a sewer. That is it. That is it. An entire film. I don't know how long it is. An hour and a half, at, you know, at least. 90 minutes and nothing really stuck except for an image of a sewer. So, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't go back to that anytime soon either. Now, finally, she's going to make up the time, uh, and again, she's kind of tackling it how, how we do it, where we, we, we watch 24 hours worth of movies over a, a multiple day period. I think she's gone for five days now, which is great, you know, and, and, and it really is um, tough regardless, I think. And she's going to finish off with a double bill of John Travolta films, which I think is a really cool idea. Again, make it your own, you know, kind of cope with your own kind of things. I think that's really cool. Uh, Urban Cowboy, which I've never heard of, and Saturday Night Fever, which I've never seen, but obviously have heard of. So I'm going to finish up her thoughts on these final two films, and, and give you my final thoughts at the end of this ridiculously long video that is, you know, probably redundant, but I've enjoyed doing it, and I've enjoyed watching this video uh, very much over the past hour. So I'm going to finish it now and wrap it up. I will talk to you after. Which one am I going to watch first? I uh, could give a fuck. Uh, but there, I Is that going in? Yeah, that one's going in. <laughs> I could give a fuck. But you're going to edit out my political things. Yes, absolutely. Fair enough. <laughs> Just don't get pissed off at me anymore. All right, you guys. Thank you for joining me and watching this. And uh, I will catch you next time. Take care. All right, there we go. Let's go back to the beginning. Get a title card up there. So. Finished with Karate Popcorn's 24-hour movie marathon video. I loved it. I actually really loved this. It was a great watch. 
It's exactly what I like out of a, a 24 hour movie marathon video. She changed it up with the angles, you know, sitting in different places or standing in different places while talking about the films, going out and about, running errands and stuff, and just very much a, a, you know, a feature length vlog, you know, and that's what I really like about these um, marathons. I mean, you can sit down and just talk about the films, and that's just exclusively what the video is about, and that's fine, and I still enjoy that don't get me wrong but I do love it when people make it more of a, an experience and more of a day in the life in a way although in her case it would be kind of little chunks of days in, a, in the life uh, which again I think is great and as she was kind of saying at the end she was very tired and doesn't have people do it over 24 hours um, in one fell swoop and yeah it's true even doing it over a few days you know you, you're realizing that so much of your time is being taken up by i've got to keep watching movies again and you know the, as soon as i finish with this one i gotta watch another one you know uh, and then once i've done with that one i've got to watch another one and it does it does even though you love films it does kind of mount up but i think it's a fun experience and uh, it's great to kind of rattle off a load of films that you either want to return to and watch again or movies you've never seen before that you've really wanted to get to and it gives you an excuse to power through and experience some good films and stuff like that so love the video a little bit of interaction with her husband there which I thought was really funny uh, and enjoyable uh, but generally just a just a good kind of um, rec recording a record of a, a marathon I think so yeah that was great that's probably one of my favorite ones I think um, of all the ones that I've seen uh, really enjoyable hope she does it again next year uh, and yeah from here on out I don't know whether I'm gonna because this is as it stands this is the only one that's been released this year as far as I'm aware uh, and then that's another thing that like, there's people who have done it who know who Ryan Chatway is um, But there's people who've done it who don't know who Ryan is and they've, they're using the same guidelines, you know, it's kind of uh, by osmosis the idea is kind of creeped out to other people who make videos and uh, So not necessarily people in our community, I guess uh, Do it as well. So I might have missed something like that. But as far as I'm aware, this is the first one um, So yeah, anyone who does it from here on out I, I promise I will try to do one of these if people enjoy them uh, and even if they don't, I've enjoyed doing it and, and, uh, and kind of piggybacking on some of the films and talking about them and stuff like that. And also, um, I could go back and watch all the marathons and comment on those. So that might be a, an option as well. So there we go. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. hope this idea worked and I will see you uh, in the next one if I do one, which is probably likely. Um, so yeah, and great job on the marathon video. Really enjoyed it. Uh, goodbye. Hey, he's alright by me <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and calling into a tree <laughs> Yeah he's really cool Yeah he's really cool But he's not quite as cool as you cause